Yeah. Right, everyone. Well, um, we'll get going. I know there's a couple of people that are running late, so they'll just come in uh, as and when. Um, firstly, thanks for registering. Thanks for coming. Um, thanks to these guys for sharing what they're about to share. Um, should be some really good insights to you. So, um, definitely a good look at how the team does everything. Um, Josie and the guys are going to explain what they do through the week. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but what we said is if there's any questions whilst we're going through, ask them as we're going. I'm all happy with that. Um, so don't feel like I have to save the questions to the end. We will do questions at the end. But as you're going through, just ask as we get going. So we'll all get more out of it that way. Um, I'm going to start by turning that off. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, so Ryan, Daryl, Danny, Steve, and myself, Josh. Okay, so we'll all be talking through this evening. <coughs> so I'm going to give you a quick intro, and I think why you'd use video analysis, just very basics of video analysis, maybe some things to, to pick up and take away. Then the guys are going to go through basically what your week looks like, uh, analysis stuff. So game to review to training to prepare it. I might say questions and answers at the end, but let's just ask questions as we go through. So, just to give you a bit of background on uh, Analysis Pro, my company, um, started out, uh, John, our founder, was an uh, international coach, uh, rugby union, and scrum coach, so coaching is very much at our basis. And he started, he was working with the American Eagles, uh, 97 World Cup, and um, 799. Good skills, 99. Um, and obviously, scrum coach for them, but then started using performance analysis. Um, so he was shoved in a room of very early software and, and getting to know things from there. Um, fast forward a long time, um, started analysis pro. I was a performance analysis student, so I've worked with different teams. And I came on board because um, I like the tools that John had and I like working with John. And my main aim is to go and teach people about video analysis, hopefully show you some nice tools, and constantly support people throughout. And then we get to work with teams like Castleford as well. Big bonus. So our focus um, at Analysis Pro is giving a complete solution. So we really believe in analysis for all. So that's from the grassroots teams up to professional teams and international level teams as well. And you're going to see as we go through You'll see it all the time since it's on the very bottom of the slide. Um, shoot, analyze, share. So I think if you keep that in mind, shoot, analyze, share, I think that's the easiest way to break down what performance analysis process is. So shoot, we've got to get our video. Analyze, break it down, share is the important part. Okay, so from the beginning to the end, we've got shoot, analyze, share. So our aim, and hopefully tonight's going to do some of that, is to educate and enhance. So if I can save you five minutes of time doing something every day with the process, so hopefully I've done that with a few times, then that's a bonus. If I can save you more time or teach you something new, brilliant. Okay, that's our main focus here. So why would we use video analysis? Um, can you remember this stat? There is, there was a study done, and I can't believe I actually forgot the stat now, but it's something like uh, top level coaches can only remember 40%. So anyway, there's a really famous study that I definitely should know the stat on it, uh, but they can't remember everything from a game. Okay, so um, if any of you can remember everything that happens, fair play, you're better than all the others. Um, but realistically, I don't think that happens. So we can't remember everything that happens, and even if we think we remember most of the stuff, do we remember everything, but do we remember things the same? I'm sure you guys have had discussions during the game, after the game as well, that you look back on something and everyone sees things slightly differently. Okay, so the key thing for us, if we're going to feed back on performance, we want to know what we're feeding back on. The great thing about a camera is that it does remember everything, okay, but importantly there it remembers everything that could that it can see. So we'll come to that later. Um, and a camera's memory of an event doesn't change. So during the heat of the game, 
we see something we've got a lot of emotions running around. So our memory of that action is going to be different to when we look at it afterwards. Okay, the camera doesn't have emotions. It doesn't put rose tinted spectacles on anything. It's just standard little lens. So if we're using video, that can help us to make informed decisions and demonstrate our feedback clearly. How many of you uh, use video analysis currently? Okay, or use, or use video at all? Okay, so do you find that you can show back a key point easier with video there? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Perfect, that's the correct answer that we all want. That's the point of us being here is not. Okay, so if we've got video to look back on, the point that you're trying to make, someone can understand it. So coming back to how everything starts with video, if we're doing video analysis, the camera mem uh, remembers everything that it can see. That's a key thing to think of here. So some people will say, right, can you film this game for us? Brilliant. Everyone can put a camera up and film. But there's some key things you should think of when you're filming is what do you actually want to see from the game. So some examples there are we looking at shape, technique, decision making, or a highlights reel. Because depending on what you want to see, so how you want to lead your coaching, how you want to do your feedback, how you want to assess your team, should determine how you feel. If we're looking at shape, we need a wider view. Okay, we want to see how our whole team is functioning. If we're looking at technique, and maybe it's something in training, we want to be zoomed in and we really want to be seeing that technique. So if you are using video already or going to start working with video, that's really important to think about what you want to look for. And if you've got someone filming for you, make sure they know what you want to look for as well. Big thing is height is the key. And I always say, if in doubt, zoom out. Okay, there's nothing worse than speaking from experience, because I've had some pretty rogue people filming my rugby team, that it's zoomed in all the time and you cannot see what's going on. So if in doubt, zoom out, because everyone can always move closer to a screen afterwards and try and see more. Okay, so zoom out, we'll see more shape, we'll see more people uh, around the ball, whatever sport that is. And height really helps with that. So even if we're using a standard camera, try and get a tripod. So going from here to up there makes a difference. Obviously, if we can be elevated even higher, it all makes a big difference. Or the picture you see there, for example, is at the back of the room, which we can have a look at later. And um, that's like a sports map. So that's our mask that has a camera in it, an IP camera. That will go up to six meters, then you've got a really good view of it. So if you're filming, try and get some really good height. This is really boring, um, but I think it's really useful information. Um, if you're starting to work with video, or if you currently do, I'm sure you've got loads and loads and loads of different video files. Um, the most important thing to do is store them and name them with a set protocol because it will quickly become a mess. Um, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Why is it a mess? Because I've seen yours before you started at the front yeah. end and it was a mess. Um, no offence to it, it's true. Something I would suggest, just because it, it, I think it works in a lot of ways and it works with the software, is this year, month, date, home team awaiting. So, what's the date today? 29th. So, today I would go 19.01.29. Okay, so year, month, day. Because that... Oh, see, that fries my head. That's the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah. so I, I'm like, oh, all the time looking. Yeah. But I'll tell you why, why we do it that way. Because on, again, this is a really boring part, but it's quite useful. Um, when it's in your folders on your machine, that's how it goes in. It's alphabetical order, it's called chronological order. So it will go from the earliest to the latest. So it does seem like a really simple thing, annoying thing to do, but it will save you loads of time because the more and more that you start building up the stuff, when you go back, it's easy to find. And when we come to the software, something the software does is pick up the name of the video file by default. So you could then search for that thing straight away. But putting in information of the home team, away team, some people put the outcome there as well, so I could instantly search my games that we won, games that we lost, okay, different competitions. If you think about it, the start, it should save you time in the long run. This is just to say there's, um, on our website, Analysis Pro, we've got a, a section where it recommends some um, equipment, so if you are getting started, um, 
the camera that you see there, these little Sony ones, they're about 200 odd quid, two or 300 quid. They record in HD, they're brilliant. Okay, if you haven't got a massive budget, something like that will really help you. The best thing to invest in, um, like if I had, if I could get a 400 gig quid camera or a 250 quid camera and a tripod and a, a controller for it, I would get a 250 quid camera and a tripod. Okay, so just think about some practical things like that. Okay, some people, we don't have a camera guy. Okay, a lot of people have that, we have it at, at my club. But try and make use of any injured player, supporter, or just set a camera up, really zoomed out and you've got something. So something's better than nothing. Okay, there, there will always be some type of way you can do it. Like at the back there, that camera is not zooming around, but we're going to pick up stuff because it's in a stationary position. So, we've got the video um, and we're thinking about what should you analyse. So, key performance indicators, how do you measure su uh, success in your team? So, what are the things that you want to look for? Um, what's your key coaching points that you're going through? In my mind, just start with a few simple things that match up with your coaching message and match up with the things that you want to achieve. I think... Um, there we go. I just wanted to get to this one. So, I should put that a bit earlier. Avoid paralysis by analysis, okay? A lot of people will get started, and whether they're using software or not, maybe some people start pen and paper, we try and look at everything. And if you try and look at everything straight away, it'll fry your head. There's too much stuff going on, and you're not going to get anything out of it. So pin it down, get really efficient with going through a few things, and then evolve from there. Um, Stats and video, I think, are two different things. So for me, I'm, um, when I've done some coaching or review things with my team, stats at the level that we play, the stats don't make a massive difference to us. It depends on different sports, different levels of competition. The video makes a massive difference. So I focus on the key clips that I want to see through the game, and then the stats come afterwards. Different sports, different levels, that changes. So think about the stats you want and the clips that you want. Again, maximise the time you have available. Focus on uh, the key points. So again, from paper to computer, this is hopefully something you're, but you'll definitely see it now. Um, a lot of people have had a video and they go through and mark times. So key moments that happen, brilliant. If you're doing that, you're starting analysis. You're, you're picking out the key points. What you'll hopefully see from today is how if you go to a computer and some software, we can speed up that process, make it more efficient. You're basically doing the same thing, of, but instead of writing down the time you're marking it on the video, then you've got it to review afterwards. So the software that uh, you're going to see in action today is Nat Sport, uh, video analysis software, just to, uh, obviously because you'll be convinced by the end of it that it's the greatest software ever invented, um, but some other reasons. Um, it's used all over the world and in different sports. So something that you see, um, the guys have our things called templates. You know, we talked about those key actions, the key performance indicators. You create your own thing. So whatever you want to look for, you can find it. Okay, so that's why it's applicable for loads of different sports. From the grassroots up to the top teams, we've got people using it all over. There's different versions, and um, there are some brochures around which give some more information that you can look at. And this lifetime license is a key thing. So for us, if you've used the software and you've analyzed stuff, that data and that video is yours. We're never going to take that away from you. So that's a benefit with a lifetime license. Easy to learn and quick to use. Um, maybe some of you guys have got some experience on that. Could maybe back me up or not, to be honest. Yeah, I think for me, I'm probably, as well, I'm probably the least confident, I would say, with computers, but it's some, I picked up really easy. Um, over with what we had now, about a year, I think, just under a year. Um, yeah, and it's, that's it, it's as all it is there. It's, it's pretty simple to pick up, so I'm still on to, you know, still need to, to get better at, but um, I'm still learning to go, but yeah, it's pretty simple. Cool. And something we, we try and do, um, at Analysis Pro as well is we have something called a uh, knowledge base. So we've got tutorial videos for everything, articles for everything, we've got a big support team because we know that if you're using the stuff, we want you to get the most out of it as well. Um, 
so support is a big thing for us. Um, and the other point today about it constantly evolving. So if the guys request a feature, they normally come into the software. Okay, so we work with you. It's, there's coaches that help develop uh, the software. There's coaches within the company that work with different teams. For example, the founder and the developer um, worked with the Spanish hockey national team for years and years. Okay, so it's people that are at the forefront and use it in the environment to understand what's uh, impactful as well. So yeah, support tutorials. So just uh, summarise with that shoot, analyse, share, and you're going to see everything in a lot more detail now and a lot more interested. I'm sure you'll uh, agree. But I think if we break down that shoot, analyse, share again, and what the software enables you to do, capture, so that's whatever video camera we're doing. So we get that and we observe and register. We see those key moments, those key performance indicators that we want. We click them up. Analyze, I think, is something, personally, I find register and analyze is two different things. I would say when you're registering, that's when you're tagging the moments in the game. You're being pretty objective about what's happening. Where I think, as coaches, you can really put your input in is the analyze section. So you're looking back at your clips. What have you seen there? Are you going to add some notes on that? That's the important part. Okay, so tagging and analyzing, I think, are two very different things. Tagging is objective to just break down that game so we can review it, but then you spend your time in analyzing to create the feedback for the presentations which we can share with the team and then lead to improvement. So you're going to see that um, firsthand from these guys here, but hopefully that gives kind of a bit of a background around everything. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay? Cool. Any questions before I step up? Perfect, must have been excellent. Um, cool, I'll hand you over. Right, so, uh, yeah, my name's Dean Mills, I'm head of analysis at uh, Cast Tigers, uh, working with these guys. I uh, joined last year. Um, so, these guys have been top of the game for a couple of years now. My decided to come in and try and improve and put this side, probably the, the side that, that's added to it a little bit, uh, from all different areas, really. So. The best way to show you, we, we spoke originally with John about to show you guys what we're doing. I think just go through a week about how we use it. All the different aspects from finishing a game, enjoying a game, playing for a game, and see where we go on that. So we're going to go through it. Obviously we've got Danny Fowley and Chess who will go join it and talk through it what we're doing. If you've got any questions, just jump in and ask. So we'll start with our in-game. So I get asked all the time about what we're doing in the gantry you now when we've got TV, our camera TV around and we get on the street and stuff. And so what we've got up there, we've got, we get a video feed from either Sky Sports or Minecraft we film the games. We have a 32 inch television upstairs, up there where we get a live feed. So I'm tagging live, which I'll show you shortly. I've got loads of stats that we're tagging along live. Also we've got a video replay. So these guys can scrub all the way back you go frame by frame on stuff, but also doing all that, we're actually clipping stuff at half time to show the boys. Um, so, every this is something new last year that we brought in was every half time, uh, we've got another telling the changing room where the boys will always watch a video presentation uh, between, between me and the coaches. So, I'll go through what we do. So, obviously, we've got live video, uh, we scroll back a village. This is on our live version that we've got. So, at the club, we've got got a lot of different versions of the software uh, which suits each, each people's needs really. So then, uh, so mine's got the live video scrub back, we've got live stats linked to a dashboard which the dashboard is what you can put to an output screen uh, so they see different to what you're inputting. Uh, and I'll show you on that, That's, it's nice and it refreshes itself all the time. Uh, we, we're not really a big fan of that, stats during the game we, we're doing it but we're more towards to the video side. Um, and again, we've just got um, a new thing called Coach Station on, on the Surface Pro, uh, which is we send a wireless signal across to our bench for our doctor's fix. It's something that's compulsory now this year. Um, so we do it uh, for other things as well, but on game day, the video signal's being sent from myself on the go trip to the sideline to a laptop where they can scroll back and forth and uh, look at a video. So I'll just show you. So this is my, my template for the game. 
uh, which gives you what we're looking at. So it'd be as simple as when we're, when we're tagging, it would be as simple as I just go, your brackets are your, your keys, you know, if you want to set your hotkeys up sometimes, it's a bit of a, a pain in the ass to try and back into what you think. So it's simple as click, click, done. Captures it, you know, exactly what you've got. There's no messing around. It's all then feed into your dashboard, which I'll show you next. Um, this is what they're saying, this can be created however you want. You'll see a couple of my templates tonight. Um, I'll show you one of the ones that the players use as well. So these can be created. This is just exactly what we're focusing on. Change from game to game. We might have certain targets that we're looking at. Um, saying that can be designed however you want. That's just something we're looking at at the minute. So you've got um, the dashboard which it links to. So if you were to, to have a separate screen with a telly on it, you didn't want your video feed on it, and I've done it in the past where I put that then on the, the external screen. So that constantly refreshes, it sets every 10 seconds at the minute. So it's constantly ticking through so that, you know, if, it, if Paolo is more of a stats fan during a game, if a different coach is more of a stats fan, then that will constantly tick through for him. So you can say, when I'm here off, you're watching a little bit more video. On that side of things again, that's totally created from scratch, very easy to do. You create little buttons, move about, resize them out, whatever you want. Put your buttons in graphs, pictures, whatever you want to do. Simply suit to exactly what you want, linking back to your, your live template. Would they save at the end of the game then? Yes, and they save, yes, and they save to your file. So your file saves, so even throughout the game you can fire that up. Uh, Somebody you can build up, so if you have five games, so we sit down in the office the next day, and we can go on our five last live games that I've done live during the game, and it'll fire a total of all five. It's very it's easy to do, you don't have to save it, it just does all itself. Just a little cup at half time, Sky keep getting us at half time uh, when, we, when we're doing a little bit of video, but it's probably something different. So I don't know if you want to talk about what's been different really this year or last year. It's just the ability to be able to feed back to players with the stuff that Mill was doing stat wise and obviously video wise live. We can look back at any clip, any, any area of our game and look and go right and we need to improve in this area. Or if you have a look at that, that they might be doing this defensively. We can sit through and we'll have a look at both attack and defence clips. So what we need to do in attack, what we need to do in defence, only short clips. You don't have to cloud the reds too much at half time. You get a little bit longer at, on Sky in terms of the time that you get. It's around about 15 minutes, so you can push it a little bit. But short clips, little reminders, is our plan working? Right, this is what we need to do, and then obviously it helps the player in terms of like going out of the play and what we're asking them at half time. And you can see they're all sat there like the kids. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I think that is, again that's coming from the, the template that I've shown you before. Um, it changes a little bit than what we use now. It's just got attack and defence. So we might have during the game, Paul Lynch has to go in. Yeah, clip that, clip that, and then we might have 20 at the end of half time. But about eight minutes before half time, he shares the word out now. That's probably around the time to cut off, <coughs> cut the video off. Then we start to organise, write some notes. Me and Shares will run through it. We know exactly what we've got. Inform Pally while he's still watching the game and making decisions on what's going to happen at half time. Then they want to know us. For example, this game we showed them something on Leeds defence and that Magic and the first set of the game we would be scored off it. So it proves how, how important it is. Because at the end of the day, team previews might find a little bit different to what we've watched all week. So when we can be back to the half time, it might just be the difference in, in the second half. Is that something that maybe one of you just leaves that now? Do you also chicken them that? Get half time when you've got them? No, Ryan will, uh, this year, uh, Ryan's looking after our attack. I look after our, our defence. Dan, Dan looks after a, a bit of both, and our, our, 
our young players, our elite young players. Um, so it'll be a little bit of, of both. So Shez will talk about our, our attack and then I'll jump in on a, a, not too not too many. You know, we don't have lo- loads of clips, but if anything's really key, then you know, we'll, it'll be split. And then obviously we've got individual communication with, with players as well. So we might take the video around just to a, to the left the left side or the right side or the middle unit might be getting something might need to improve in a certain area. Um, so yeah, we, we're pretty flexible with it, but, but we all sort of lead on different areas. Yeah, I think it's good that the players might <coughs> want to just look at something that we haven't seen. So obviously we've got the full half, so it's not just what we've clipped. Next quarter, I'll let you register the whole half with your clip, so you can always look at something they want to look at. You know, if Paolo wants to I'll just pull that up, it's just easier to skip back with your arrows and your keyboard, skip back to where you look at you've not got it clipped, and see exactly what he's after. So this is just a little uh, video of us at LFC away, if you plays. You know, how, how we use it, ignore my ball spot, and then uh, just how the boys, how they've all got used to it, and how it's, it's helping us as, as a team last year, and I'm going forward. It's been pretty much every every game last year where, where we've done it, so it's a big it's a big change for the guys, and we've had some good feedback from the boys about how they prefer it, and so some of them keep going forward. So obviously after the game, uh, from from Sky or after we get two angles. Uh, if we're on Sky, I tend to go to the, the Sky truck and I'll film the uh, capture ball end ons so behind the sticks because there's every camera you can want in there. Um, so with these guys on their software, they can get um, two two angles uh, on mine. They've just dropped it down to four on mine, uh, so I can get four, which I'll show you a little bit in a second about how easy it is to, to clip a little bit farther. It's a case of once you fire your next photo, it's a registered file. Just find that again. Give me all the Josh, it's all nice and neat. So as you can see, so I've got a very, very basic template on what we use for uh, if we're just doing anything quick manually. So I've got before, so these guys will just have two, and then we split down the middle. Uh, obviously I've got before, so to move between these angles, it's just like a keyboard, number four, five, six, or seven. It's really easy as you register it just to just to flip between the two. Uh, obviously, this uh, you know at an amateur level, it's your, it's your one angle if you, you know, if you're really possible. Uh, you know, I try and get as many as you can. I just think even if you can film, and we film this one is where we're sat. So I've got someone inside of me just filming where we're sat, just because it might just give us a little bit something that someone hasn't captured. Uh, Leads are looking to give us this in the front of them. So normally on the sky we'd have tight, wide, end on, end on. So we have all four what we can see. And, uh, I don't know you guys about linking your videos up, it's, it's pretty, pretty yeah, simple. It's, yeah, it's pretty easy, yeah. yeah it's <coughs> just a couple of clicks and you've got the, the, angle, the angles synced in together. So you just switch between the charges. So you, I think that's a bit of preferential chain. How come you've got four? Yeah, yeah, you've got yeah, 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 what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So to, to clip it, to if you wanted to do a clip, these set are a manual mode, so you can either set them to, to once, you, once you click a button to go so many seconds before, so many after, mm-hmm. uh, which I do when I do individuals. That's I find that the easy way. Uh, but these are, are manual ones, which we'll use uh, now again. It's a very very basic template. So it's simple as click the button. So that's your start. You clip so once it's flashing. It's 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 capturing what you what you want. Um, what we have to explain for those ones to these guys, and the first use them as if you start right now when you clip, it's not going to be jumping back. The caption on restart, that restart time is to your end point. So you can do multiple ones at the same time. If you want to jump between angles as you as you're doing them, so 
you can see what's going on. It's easy. So once you've, you've done your clip, uh, you clip will go to the bottom there. You right click, you type no, enter, save, carry on. Easy as that clipping. So once you've clipped, you've done your basic clip, you wrote your note, you'll sort the rest out later. You make, make sure you just do it. Well, you probably clip quite a lot and then trim it down rather than trying to select your clips as you as you're doing. Is it ever at the start we talked about that um register there uh, and analog? I think that notes adding notes to the clip I think is when you add more more emphasis around it sort of tag the moment. But if you've seen something there and adding it as you're watching it, is that do you guys add your notes as you're clipping or do you do it afterwards in your I'm, I'm, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends how much how much, how much time I've got. Yeah. Um, I, I think it helps if you've got the time to do it because it gives you a reference point. You want to have a look look back. You can you can see. It. Otherwise, you you're looking through the clips <coughs> at times and going, oh yeah, I remember that one. And then you you're making notes. Yeah. I think it does help. Yeah. I take notes. They help me massively. And I, when I finish my clips, I can put them into what I'll you know, label them certain certain ways and you see drag and drop. All around, pretty easy to use So uh, that's just the, the, the basic clipping. Let's move on to the slides here. <coughs> so post match, so I'm just showing you how the register a game. This is uh, our template <coughs> for, for this year for attack. So after a game, I'll probably watch a game four or five times. Um, these guys know it's killing me. <laughs> the amount of time to watch it. Um, Rob Lewis uh, is doing some stuff for our, for our team, stuff in our academy. He's 16, so he helps massively. But why do I end up watching it about six times? So I watch it once with our attack, once with our defence, once with our team stuff, and then once with our yardage and good ball detail. <laughs> so yeah, so it's again a little bit different to us, so your, your buttons before were text. When I found when I'm doing my individuals, um, I like to use the shirt numbers because I'm a bit of a remember numbers rather than faces. I remember boots and what numbers go to boots and stuff like that. So I always have the shirt and then click on them. So at the end of your, end of your, your clipping, you can change them back to the names. It's a simple click of a button. Enter your name instead of a number, it's easy. That's, just, that's how my mind works. If, if you get into my mind, you change the shirt number, it's easy. No, I'm all right. I know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good, really. I don't. Yeah, I probably do. So it's just a case of, again, it'd be click your shirt, click your action. These are all descriptors with the red dots. So they are my actions I'm looking for. Um, so there, I'd go simply one, feet, carry. And i go carry, rub, win, pass, link up, offload. Simple as that. Mm. You know what I'm looking at as, as, a, as a detail point of view. We'll just be on the other screen then, from you. Yeah, so with it, with exports, which is good. Now I know some some of the software don't let it's in a small window, so each of us has got a, a big a screen or a telly. Paul's got a big telly. Uh, <laughs> where we can put our video onto the other screen, so we can really get a decent look at it, and we can leave that just on our. So like from a, from an amateur point of view, yeah. obviously you're not going to have that facility what because you guys have. Yeah. So what, what, what advice would you give to have all them free on, on one? Well, I can still do it. You can I, still I, do I, it, easy, yeah. I did some work last night at home, just sat on the art top, and it's obviously it's just small. You just yeah. got to move things around your screen a little bit, but you can go to that the separate screen, it's not, it's not yeah. massive, know, so it just, it just helps if you have. I know like Shed links up to his telly at home, because I do it, I plug it into the telly and it's but you can go, you can make your template as small as you want, sort of thing, you know, so you can drag your video as much as you want. It's just a, okay, so I just use anything I've got really. Um, these guys are luckily enough to have some, some good equipment here. And, um, just before you move on there, the, the key thing with a with template, obviously there's all the information that the device wants to put in, but actually how that's laid out, it's not just to look pretty. Um, looks very pretty like that. Um, but it, it's there to be functional as well. So you can, there's the players down the left. So like I'm reading the book left to right, I know I start there, then I move across. And I guess your actions at the top happen more often than the ones at the bottom. Yeah, we try to get it so it flows. So I said we're always going to go and carry. Did they pass the ball? You know, what, if not, what did they do? 
and we have a look at the shape and stuff after. So we, we try to get four and a half just to come in some means of stuff on that. Again, same with defence, same sort of idea. If you're a mad cast fan, that's not the team for this week, but you can't read really it into it. So you go, you, you click your name, again, tackle, what Josh spoke about is we're getting close, so we've got tackle to start. And Paul is looking at whether we've gone one on one loss, one on one uh, win, just so we can break it real down into detail. Whether it's a front or a back, whether we've missed, and again, it flows nicely, so we've got marker, or is your retreat light, we're looking at our system stuff. Again, some good ball stuff for, the, for our backfield boys. Just to get Pally on that sort of stuff. No, obviously there's, there's a, a lot in there. Um, it's what, what the players get. Um, and a lot of it uh, of that is positional based as well. So the players will get... Um, yeah. uh, there'll be a... What, what do you call it, mate? I've got it, sure. I've got it for a minute. No, are you going to talk yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah. Right. So, so they'll get a list of all their actions ju- during the game. So they can click on any of the actions and say, right, how have I gone with that? And we've got plus and minus there. So plus positive a- action, minus, you know, not not quite right. So they can look at all their minuses. They might have um, just they might have a, a cage minus, which is our short side system. So then they can look at that and, and see where they might have not quite got it right. Um, so it, it just makes it more specific. It makes it really specific in terms of what you're doing well, what you're not doing so well. I know everybody's a little bit different, obviously. We're trying to help you know, really outstanding players to be better, so we're trying to give them as much detail as possible. Uh, I think from my point of view, like we've had loads of chances from analysts to understanding what your coaches want. Like, for example, I've worked on the club, so my understanding of one of these might be different. So we're constantly in communication about just watching little snippets and understanding what each other wants. I've got to learn that the cast game. It's a little bit different to what I've been used to. So we're, we're getting there. It's just keeping that communication going between. Mm. Um, so turning registers register into reports. So once all your, your tags got and you've done all your registering, uh, there's a couple of ways you go. You can either set me dashboard like I've shown you before. When I'm a bit of an Excel geek, so I the, the software allows you to export into Excel. So all your numbers come out as, as an Excel. Um, so people have um, you can create you know just one off a raw data sort of stuff. But I have it so I have a, a template set up. It's about 40 odd tabs at the minute. But if I raw drop that uh, export data, so when I go to next export, I export an Excel. It comes out just a real sheet of numbers. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to anybody else. All I do is copy and paste into my template that I've got set up on Excel, which drops into the line of code, drops into all the other templates, saves me a lot of the time. So I know a lot of people manually enter, but it's, if you learn simple formulas, I've learned off, on, on, on my own, really, all self-taught, so I advise you to do a lot of, if you're going to enter that side of things, to do a lot of uh, research online about how you do these formulas, because it can save you so, many, so much time. Again, using mm-hmm. the dashboard, I, Jeff keeps hammering me because I don't use them enough. Um, so that's something I'm trying to work on to save me a little bit of time. So I'll show you what Paul is about, uh, <coughs> what we're coming to, Shez. This is your... Well, these are just uh, the breakdown of sets. Just for, if you look there, for example, where it says yard is set, that's where we get the ball from our own trial line. So we'll break it down. So how many kickoff sets have we received? Have we completed them? And this game is against Leeds, we have four errors, so we can look back and I'll think, why, where are we making errors, why are we making them? Um, looking down, so kick returns, and these are obviously guiders in terms of areas where we think we've been real good in our kick returns. So, Mildy stats, all this sort of stuff, right, let's have a look at our kick returns. So, the software that will pull all that up, we can all look at kick returns. 
see what we're doing well, see what our safe like in backfield. And then moving to good ball there, it's just our starting, our sets off. So quite a few tap penalties. So we focused a fair bit on that leading up to up to that game. The scrum starts, how many we can play. The second half of that game we were really poor against Leeds. But that's just a set breakdown, it's a simple one. And anyone else has to know we can open up look at that set if need <coughs> I think that the important thing, like Shane just mentioned, then is anything that you do. So, if two of you have got software, um, they say you don't need two amateur coaches have got software, and one of you just would work, it saves it as a NAC file. You send that NAC file to, you, to the other coach, and it links straight up. So, if I send, I send all these stats to these guys, all they have to do is open it up, and all this appears for us. They don't have to do any extra work, it just does it for them. So, this is the positional again, Shane. So this is your back five attack um, sheet. This is the output. So once I've raw dropped it into Excel, this is one of the, the sheets that I've created. So again, this is just a blank Excel that, that we've come up with on how we want it to look. So I don't know if you want to. So this is just our back five. Obviously, individual performance stats. We're just looking at some key areas within our game and focus a lot on it on in three seasons. So, yeah. <laughs> so looking, base around carry. So how many times have they carried the ball? So how many times have they run with the ball? The meetings that they make, um, post contact meetings at PCM. So when they get into the tackle, how many times they're, they're coming through there uh, into the tackle, how many meetings they're making after that contact. And these are just key things we focus on through pre season is finishing to front, being put to back, and rough percentage win. So we've done a lot of work this season on players carrying the ball and getting the ball, so landing on the front. So we can look at this area and say, for example, <coughs> there is uh, Greg Minikin. So looking at his work rate, it's nowhere near what James Clare's is. So we can guide him that way. I'll look at his carry to see what you're doing, but if you look, you've only got five foot finish, you're sweeping back, and you're down at 63%. So he can look at his carry, his, his uh, flips, I'm looking at it, but well, I'm not doing this right, I need to be doing this. So this obviously, in terms of performance, will guide his training for the, the next week. So real quality in terms of what we can pick from any area. So a player can look at any, any one of these things, look at his market disruptions, for example. Market disruption is what we call if the markers are offset, say he's carrying the ball, he's playing the ball, and the markers are offset or someone's laying on the ground. So we can look at all those, those uh, video clips there, see what he's doing well in the areas that he needs to improve on. From a attack point of view, that's absolutely massive for us in terms of guiding their training and improving performance from every individual and us there as a team. Again, this is a, a defence one from Carly. Um, again, so same sort of thing, stat wise. But you know, if you want to just yeah, like, um, so, so um, well, obviously there's, there's a lot in there. So there's the tackles that there's the tackles at this side. So the different type of tackles that these guys will um, will make. They'll, they'll very rarely make one on ones. So you've got two on ones, uh, three on ones, and it's where where they've been, where we've won, where, where the lost, um, whether um, the, the ball carriers find in front on you or are you putting to back. And look at Paul McShane for example, um, he's had a lot of tackles, doing a lot of work in the middle, um, but he's, he's losing a few too many. Um, he's, he's getting spotted up a little bit, so we work pretty hard on, on looking, looking after him so he's not isolated on, he, on his own. Um, and a win, a win percentage, so you know, if you look at Watsy there, he's a little bit down, he's a bit loose in that game, milling and down at 50%. So these guys are up, up 70s and starting to get closer to, to where we want them to be. So we can give them a, a real target on, and we're looking around 75, 80%, which is a, a tough target. And then uh, as you get up here, you've got your markers, and uh, some system stuff, then these, these are, are effort stats, so they're colored a little bit differently. So, um, just a, a kick chase effort. So there's only one of our front rowers who's allowed out of the kick chase, for example. There's only the guy playing the ball. Everybody else is expected in, in the chase. So if they get if they get a minus uh, for that, so in this game, what, what's he got a couple? So we're saying, look, mate, come on, we need you in the line. Um, so it gives us a chance just to, to nip down on. But so this middle fill effort is where, where the team moves the ball on you are our middle players filling the spaces and keeping us nice and solid on the inside. If there's a knock off, then that picks it up. So the detail of everybody doing doing the job consistently, so this gives us a real template to be able to uh, 
be able to fix anything up. This this hunt is is putting pressure on ball players, so they can't just get at the line and play. So there's uh, thankfully there's no minuses in there. They're all they're all pretty positive. And, and as Millsy was saying, it's really important that we all understand and Millsy understands exactly what we're looking for. Um, and the, the few of these stats that I, I'll do myself, yeah. because there's, there's quite a lot for Millsy to look at. You got 50 odd um, stats in there defensively. So you're looking at a lot of things. Um, the key thing for players is we're aiming to make players better all the time. And to be able to give them those little bits of, of detail to help them to be better and for us to function better as a team. Um, that was really important for us. And then to get a, a bit of a, an overview of, uh, of what, they've, what they've done. And it's just trying to drive, drive the funds all, all the time. Do you yeah. think that's the main thing of your set? Yeah, and, and I think you know we've got a competitive squad, so you, you're saying uh, that it gives you the opportunity to look. Uh, we need to talk to you about this area of performance, um, what, what, whatever it is, and you know there'll be players, the players who kept left out on on certain things, uh, you know that relate to, in particular the, the effort stuff. Um, so, so yeah, it's all about driving, driving standards, driving performance, helping players to be as good as they possibly can. And we're, we're trying to win a championship, you know. So um, we, we, we uh, and, and I think one of the things I've said recently is uh, that people are about us not recruiting players. Well, the coaching's about getting players that you've already got to be better. And I think that's what it's about. So you know, this really helps us to, um, <coughs> to to drive though the things that we want our players to to, to be really good at. And we get buy-in from them as well, so you know th th there'll be a chance that that we'll adjust some of these based on what we see as we as we work into the season. Yeah. So obviously going from the individual, so we try to get the, the stats to flow from individual into our unit into team, so we can always see something and then see how it flows back or where it's come from. So from them stats, we get it's all coded up so it doesn't form it. Filter from the unit, so there might be something in the, in the target from the unit. The down, we see it straight away. We'll hang on who actually let, who made that come down a little bit. Uh, so again, it's just unit shed. I don't know if you've got. So obviously that it pulls it all together there. So obviously you back five, you know, your wings, your centres, your full back, <coughs> and then your middles there. And just one stat here. <coughs> I thought our outside back in this game were real prominent. It's a friendly against Leeds. So their wings of, of rook is how they carry the ball, how they're playing the ball quick, how they're dominating the rook was right up at 70%. And if you look at the forwards here, it's way down. And let's actually look at the video, the amount of our forwards are a slow player, the ball being put to the back. So in terms of our practice, as fellas, we need to look at this. So how we're going to make our player the balls a little bit quicker. So obviously looking at <coughs> passing accuracy, little bits of detail in there, and it's like shape. So if, if I'm running the ball, I need somebody with him what's happening out the back. So then they get minus score as, as a unit, so then we might look at that. We need to work hard and our support with each other. So just guys in areas of training a little bit. But our outside backs are good with that here. Yeah. So we just breaks it down from obviously the units that so we can look at the, the work that they need to do together as a whole then. Delicious. So we go <laughs> um, forwards and backs again, just defensive for this one. So, Paula can have a look at uh, what what units and uh, what measures. Uh, we get breaking it down a little bit more. We give most tries, best rule percentage, etc. on that, mm -hmm. just to highlight some key performers. Uh, again, <coughs> Shed, sorry, mate. You, uh, the yard is so Shed will explain a little bit what we brought. So, we brought this and just to give us a, a rundown of just what our sets are looking like. So, the yard is coming away from our try line. And just how we're getting the ball, so if you look there in that corner, it's a set start, so you can turn the opposition of kicking the ball to us. And it's just whether we're carrying the ball, the type of carry. So the greens are where we've actually won the play of the ball, so we've got a quick enough play of the ball in there. The reds is where we've been put to our back and slow. So you just paint a picture of where we're losing play of the ball, where we're winning play of the ball. This might change from week to week. These might be a lot of greens are reds towards the back end, so we'd look at that, why is that happening? So it could just be the game as a whole. But what we're getting, when we get to the end of our sets, I'm kicking the meat that we're making. So it just paints a good picture of our set flow from the islands and the type of sets that we're getting. Now we're starting the ball and where we're winning our, our carries and what we're doing within it. Just whether we're completing our sets. So 
you can look at some of these and there and in there. So it just takes a good picture, so if you look at that we can analyse that I yard and check if you can break that. Shall we go there? Okay. Shall we go the same for a good ball? It gives us what we get from it, because it's new to me, this what Shez, what Shez wanted, so my job obviously is if Shez or Paolo Danny's got ideas, is then how we get that and registered and get it on. So this is something we come up from a, a trend point of view is you look at our tap starts there, so our first plays we're, we're losing everyone, so then instantly we looked at it and right, let's have a look at through that. We go straight back to the next room, let's have a look right how can we do that difference. I don't think. Yeah. So if you just determine all we've got the course set up is where we want somebody to, to run the ball to on the field. So for example, the first one we've run there, this is we've had the setup. Might have been in around this area. <coughs> we call it a plus. So it's the, it's the space between our, between the post and the scrum line. So what we've done there, we've carried the ball, but that set has been lost. That's a slow play of the ball for us. That's why that's got a red there. And then we've run a play, which is called a three, and it's been effective. We ended up making a line break on that play, so that's given us a green on that. And then some terminology in there, when we've got a short side, the reset's been slow, so we've moved the ball. And we come back to a part of the field where we want to, to set up. That's where we want the port ball kind of to carry the ball so we can start looking at the team's defensive numbers then. So obviously just to decide good ball stuff. So that gives us a good picture of what's happening in our sets, the type of players that we're using, what's happening to the end of our sets, where we're scoring our tires off, off what players. And off the breakdown over there we can see first, second and third parts of our players. So obviously these are our out play calls. And how many players are we running? from certain parts of the field and how successful the green is successful the red's not and what that will do then that will guide us in terms of our training if we're in these players and they're all reds for example is why are they all reds why are they not being effective in terms of our play shapes and things like that so then we can look at the video right this is why and then we can practice that obviously improving that then because that will just fall to the week after in terms of being successful with it but it's a breakdown of the sets the players that we're using so it's like, for example, that with the setups to fall and we're going, right, we need to start winning those. That needs to be quicker play the ball. So we'll practice that. So obviously from a, a post game, <coughs> when the game finishes, that's when my week gets busy because so we've got to turn all this around. And it's, it's a challenge, but it's a good one. Because if you look at what we get at the end of it, and we know how much it's going to help us improve, if it wins us some self-awareness, it's definitely worth it. I know these guys are getting a lot out of it, the, the players have really bought into it and we're getting a lot of good feedback off that. Uh, so I'll just go into this now, so player feedback, self-analysis. Uh, so this year we've, we've changed, so we've gone from, we had five licenses between us and that's four, we've now got 15. Uh, we've just got seven of our players' computers with that's four on, so they, they can access all our stuff that we're doing. They can clip their own, review their own stuff. Uh, again, that's linked to that's linked to ours. Our computers in our office, so we can they do some work, and then once they're done, they can come into our office, sit down one on one with the coach, and review what they've clipped. Uh, again, they found it very very easy. They've never looked, done anything like this normally. In the past, they've used Opta, so Opta give you like carries, tackles, misses, errors, and that's it. So when we want to look at some fine details. So they've never used any software like this and they're, they're absolutely flying with it. Uh, got some good comments with the boys. And then obviously part of it is getting to do the, their own stuff. So I don't know, Pally, what you want to chat why we've had to do this this year, why they need to do it. Yeah, well, we're trying to help the, the, the players to take uh, ownership for their own performances, which is which is massive. Um, so we've, we've found in the past that it's it's been more about us uh, constantly giving players information, which we're always willing to do. But um, we want our players to buy into their own uh, self self development, and, uh, and also uh, just w working together in in small smaller groups. It might be a left side work together, sit down, look through different um, different plays, and so if there's some reds on there, they can they can roll straight through that and look and see well. The first part of the play, the initial part of the play, wasn't quite right. Who was responsible for that? So then they know what they've got to do in terms of m moving forward. So you know, we're just trying to get more more feedback from players, uh, more ownership on the their own. Which they're pretty good, to be fair. They always watch their own games. This gives them a, an opportunity to see it in, with more 
clarity. Uh, but but the groups the groups working together. So whether it's the, the the middle unit. So you saw on there that some of their tackle percentages were were down. Is looking at it as a group and analysing that. So we work we're going to work out this year to to drive that. Um, I mean, I always say that coaches should be trying to make themselves redundant, which we don't really want to do all that. But um, we want to try and help the players to, to understand um, what's happening um, within their, their performance. And they're a pretty smart group of blokes, to be fair. We've got a couple of dummies, but I'm also they're smart dudes. Yeah, uh, I think from the, the buying point of view, we've had some great ones that the boys are wanting to come in early now, they're wanting to do more. Uh, we've had the right edge this morning uh, looking at some some Catalan players that we've, that we've got, so there. One of the players get a bit bought after each game and then they know why all the reds and... Yeah, so they they get all that available to them. Um, and they also have a template they can they can go through. They click on their name on any of those actions and it just brings it up. So then it will play. So if they want to look at their... Um, so the defensive stuff, say they've got some um, retreat minuses, they, might, they won't have too many of them, hopefully. Otherwise, we're getting dropped week after, but <laughs> they might have three retreat minuses and they can just go, right, what is he talking about here? Why am I getting minus for that? So they can just look at that and the clarity of that is, is really good for them to see. So they're not working hard enough to get back and then get back out again. Yeah, so they'll be able to see all, all of that. And so the individual performances and then obviously the collective performances of, of group. We create some coach players and debate as well. Themselves as well, so why we might be down on that, but then it creates a life which should is better, so it improves everybody as a, as a whole. And then that's a big thing that's changed this year, obviously, yeah, with the support of these guys, and it's, it's become possible that we've got all these you now, it's, it's really working for us so far. So, obviously, then as the week rolls up, once the post match stuff's done, the players have, have looked at their stuff, Harley would, would show one of the reviews. Uh, in Paul's review, we link back to his stats, many team targets that we've got. Uh, like it's, I think it's important sometimes is the boys don't see all of that, all of the stats. I don't know if you, you guys agree because sometimes they can just baffle. I can't imagine Greg even looking at all that. Because it's just, he'll just baffle you on game, probably Gail, it's probably the same. Mm-hmm. Where if you, if you bring it right down and have some team targets, like your basic stats that they want to look at, then it's perfect way to have a look at the power link all the way back to the stats, showing that and break it down to your into your middle, your right, your left edge. So it's it's building all as a nice picture together. So so obviously then after our review we'll have a net we'll have a day off and we're going to our, our training session. Uh, during training it's again it's a, it's one of the things where a lot of teams will just trade off the go, watch video maybe later. Where we've we've brought in a system where so we film every training session, no matter whether they're doing wrestle, gym, they're doing you know, a combo gym session, they get absolutely everything filmed. Uh, we're now doing live video using Coach Station. So Coach Station allows us, the same as the doctor's feed, but allows us to film training. So for example today, so Lewis is in the gantry filming, sends a video signal down to me and I can skip back and forth on the field with the boys. So I'm following the coaches round, if any any debates, if any, sometimes something happens and they're debating for the rest of the session. So in such a case of no, let's look at it now. And then your next play is fixed rather than waiting for it to be for the next session. You might not even get a chance if it's your run through to where they can sort something out straight away. So it gives uh, instant player feedback. Then also yeah. after training we do our reviews, whether it's the units or parley or put maybe a team review. So yesterday we had a team review after training in the afternoon, once they've done the gym, or it might be certain units again. Again, that's all made available on the computers for them. They might uh, grab their own edge, do some little bits, or look at their own performances. So obviously we've got our online sharing. How do you say it, Josh, the, the actual name? Sharing. Sharing, so sharing with an M. So we, we, it's an online platform where we put all the videos on, so I've got a couple of messages today where I've stood here from the boys asking for today's video. So they'll all sit at home, they're all very keen to watch training and see what they can do. And on, on that platform, it allows you to you write comments to us, private or write as a public. And so one player might ask another player what you know what's <coughs> going on on that and they can reply back. So it creates some discussion and good self-analysis building all back into what we're trying to do as a team. 
I just on that uh, yesterday the the right edge got a couple of things wrong in in, in practice, um, so we we watched it on uh, on video straight after yesterday. It took me about half an hour to just clip it up while they were in the gym, and then we sat down and watched it. And then they decided to come in this morning to go through it again to just make sure that the they know exactly what what they're doing and where they where they need to be moving into this week's game. So obviously, uh, not all you guys will have you know a gantry, a nice gantry up there. Uh, when you hide. So we have a we have a camera very similar to, to the one on the back, where again it feeds back. So it feeds down cable from the top to the bottom, straight into the next ball through. So it allows us to do the field. So when we're outside, we're on our 3G pitch elsewhere. We can feed out the live signal very easily with just a couple of cables. Um, even if you, you tripod like game day, sometimes we don't have the space. We just got our little tripod, tiny little one, camera on top, one cable into a capture device, into your laptop, so you can review straight away and capture your, your footage. And sometimes I feel the basic stuff here, you know, about capturing, and I think that's it's very easy to do. If you actually break it right down, it's very easy to, to do. Sometimes we go about it. So we try to do whatever we want. So this is the coach station, so uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the, our camera is on the side, and we're at Casfire here, and our camera is up here. And the tripod, I'm behind the stick, and this is the video feed I'm getting. So it's the Surface Pro, a 12 inch, 13 inch tablet. So I've got control of the keyboard at the back of that so I can do what I need to do. So we're getting a constant feed, I'm stuck behind here. Constant feed of what's going on with the camera. So if we need to see everything, no matter where we trade, we can get it straight away live. So it's, it's real easy. Uh, without that, if you didn't have your coach station, you play by play sort of stuff, so rather than the coach uh, station edition, if you person the camera, I know what we used to do was get it to clip it and it sends just a clip through. But with the coach station, it gives you the ability to go all the way back and forth. Just to explain that, um, Scott, you talked about this earlier as well. So that's all enabled by these wireless networks. So where the camera is over at the far side and you sort of picture where it's going into the laptop. As long as that laptop and your device here is obviously at the surface from the same network, so you don't need internet, you just need a Wi Fi network, so like a router or we've got big wireless things. Basically, those devices can review what's coming into the main machine. So, this is Coach Station, which gets the whole video feed and can scrub back and forth, so we've got the whole video to review. But even in the middle Scout Plus version, like we were talking about, that if you were capturing and clicking some clips live, that can then go to a phone or a tablet and in the game or in training you can look at that live dashboard and stats or review those things if you want. So actually to be able to do a live review um, functionality in that mid-range of software is, is really powerful. So if that's something that you're looking at, you can do that and you don't need thousands and thousands of pounds to do it. Okay. Um, but we can talk about that the other time. I think like it's, you see all this with us. We haven't got thousands and thousands of pounds worth of equipment. We've we've made it work for us. You know, we're not some a rugby union team that can go out and buy four of them cameras, for example. We make it work for what, what we've got here. Um, again, with the steam to buy four of them. No, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you all <laughs> So with the uh, again, like for lead, for example, we were on a press bench. So we had my laptop into a, and it's just a normal internet router. Which then send it to the Surface Pro, which they're parallel shed on in front of it. So they can skip back and forth. So it's, it's making use of what space you've got, what equipment you've got. So this is just a little clip of it in action. So rather than waiting, the boys now have just got used to if it plays. It's just not going to. The computer's crashed. But all they did, so. The boys will ask now for stuff, so if they just say, just let me have a look at that, what I need to do, and we can, we can show them straight away. That wasn't meant to play, but it looks like it's going to be great.
but it allows the boys just to have a look in, talk, discuss between coaches, players, rather than leaving it, it's just put straight into it. We go again on that play and we sort it out straight away. So that's something new we've brought in that we've been waiting for the last year. So rather than debating, it's done, we've moved on, we'll fix it on the next one. So we're going to go to some opposition preview <coughs> now. Yeah, we need to see if our internet from the office has dropped out because it's terrible. I'll, I'll control it, should right. So normally what we're saying there was is there uh, is there's a free app. We're going to speak about that, Josh, with the players as well. Yeah, it's basically like that. Uh, the presentation window. So something you're going to see here. Um, remember we talked about going back to that shoot and like share. This, I think, is where you can see that. So we've seen there's loads of stats, loads of clips that can be made. But if you make a presentation, as these guys do, and filter down to the key clips that you want to show, that's going to be your best way to either share that out, to send to someone, or play that in the software. Um, what Steve is starting to talk about is an app called uh, Remote, which basically, imagine I'm now um, going to the back of the room, and you're watching, I can control the playback of that presentation through the app. So rather than having to be at the machine, I can be more interactive and I'm with the app. Um, but I think... Yeah, yeah our, our internet's too far from coaches' office. Yeah. So basically, um, each coach difference or shares uh, prefers to use the remote so you can control it, change. So the remote, you can change angles, you don't need to do as you're talking. Uh, you can see notes on the actual, on, the, on your phone. So we just change to use his phone. Partly down for me to control, just how, how they work. So your app's free, it's just a you know, nice, easy way to, to control it. So we're going to go through now uh, shares, one of Shed's previews so from last year, so we've got insight to what, to what he's thinking, a bit more tactical now rather than, rather than the software. Um, a bit more. So I want to show you this first, because each, once you've done all your clips, you get your clips on the timeline. And you put them into a presentation. So your presentation is this now. What you're going to show the players. Each coach is different. And I, I'm different to Shez. How I would organise it. But Shez will drop in every little listing. So he knows exactly what he's got. He'll drop some slides in. I create a slide presentation for him. What they want to do. And he has his final two. So all he does then is. If I want a clip out of the yardage versus Wigan. He would drag that just into that list. It's the same if you're using you know, you know, if you're just doing a normal game, if you want the yardage stuff and you want a final presentation, you don't want all the clips that you've clipped, you can just simply just drag them into one of the lists that you're looking at. So you don't have to, I always clip them all, like, if you look how many he's got, well, he's probably got 100 clips there, he's actually picked 30 out of them, but most of them are slides in this one. So what we'll do is I'll just move that. Right, so, so what I do, fellas, I probably look at Two or, two or three games, some of the the attack coach. Just look at teams and how they're defending. So, for example, I've looked at um, when they're playing Wigan, uh, when they're playing Hull, and I break it down to the yardage defence. So, how they defend us coming off our own try line, and then their good ball defence. So, when we're attacking their try line, so how they defend against these two teams. I like to stick it down when they're pulling into two uh, yardage defence, good ball defence, and the final. I've added some slides in there, so the good thing about Mac is the ability to be able to put different slides in there, which gives players information as well. So, you, know. you can see we're going to talk about players shedding notes. Mm. So, how it helps in there, once you get all your clips together, it helps you just to order it, so you can just pull it uh, together as a thing. You can see them down, down the side there. So, let's move out so you way about yeah. the way with it. So, I will do this then, fellas, is give them the last three lineups for opposition. This is our round against uh, Huddersfield, so the players can look and see what, what the team lineup is, who's playing opposite them. Uh, move to the next one, Milder. Same again there, if there are any changes. And that was obviously the final team against uh, Wigan. So, what I do then is <coughs> look at their yard defence, which you've just spoken about. So how are they defending us and we're coming away from our try line, so how we're out from the field. So there's only a few clips on, on this fellow. So say for example, I might show a kick-off. So you just go on the wide for that one, Melzi. So I've been looking at <coughs> where we start and where we want to position the ball from the kick-off. And what are our options on play to seeing how tight they might be and what we've got positionally, what the shape looks like. 
So from that point there, we might be saying, be asking the question to our team, what do you think there? Do you think we'd be able to move the ball on the second player there? Yeah, we've got some players that we could apply to, to that shape of defence there. So, <clears throat> and if you score close, you're going to build as well. So with the options to be able to go in and out of your angles as well, if you show them the full field there in terms of perspective and what it looks like shape-wise. And then just within that on the close, so there might be some individuals in there who think, right, if we're just going to carry the ball, we're not going to move the ball, let's get forward. Is who we're going to carry on, who we're going to play into, who are the blokes that we want to target. So it might be a little bit different this week, we've had a look at um, Catalan's like kicking game and where they're going to turn the ball over. Now we're going to have to come off our own try line. So if you go next one, Bill, to them, please. So then, break that down, then. So we have a look at a couple of kickoffs. They might just kick it the other side. So what would we do from both sides of the field? Does the shape change when they get substitutions in there? Can we go at anybody else? Do our sets change of how we're going to attack? So then have a look at their middle. So middle's being in the props, obviously, from back rows to, to props and nine and things like that. So we might look at a couple of individuals in here, say, for example, Clough and Lawrence in there. Look at how they're getting back out. Powell spoke about retreats. Are they retreating back slowly? Can we get them? What does the tackle look like? So if you look at that on the retreat, there's a late retreat there, which can get a minus buzz there. <coughs> so I'm putting it under pressure. So if you look at Lawrence and Clough there, we've picked out just a couple of individuals. Not going to do anything wrong, but can we put them under pressure? Can we get forward? And obviously Wigan there just marks them up the field by staying in around their, their middle so as a focus. It's the, the ability, like you said, to just go. The boys say they watch the tap and say, well, what's, what was outside there? It's just mm -hmm. the ability to just go both and show you straight away and just flick in between the two. So then, for example, why well, don't you give them a bit of information just on, on missed tackles? They might change from week to week, but there might be some consistent missed tackles in there players that are missing tackles, so we might ask a question to the middle, what do you think around their middle? So if you look at there, say for example I mentioned Clough there, missed six tackles there, not many there, so but why did they miss six tackles in there? What did they do? So what are holding against him there or against their middle? So and then we'll go to the next slide building, please. And then we'll have a look at that. We'll talk about individuals, so we'll talk about the base of anybody that wanna focus our attack on what do we think? Well he might tackle low. We know he, he tires real easy so we can get after him. He's got poor body position so that's what the players will feed back on that. So just in terms of the feedback, what we'll get is, we did this last year is, you tend to get quite a meeting rule at times where players don't speak or you're trying to encourage other players to talk. So for this this uh, video preview, uh, Stuny Moores and Adam Milner. So it's just like it said there, speak to the person, what have you seen, what are you going to do, what do we need to do? So, for, for example, Junior, I'm just going to carry on. If he's in front of me, I need to put him under pressure, that sort of stuff. So you're getting a bit of feedback from, from the floor there. So, and then break it down to a right edge. So have a look at their right edge defence here, yeah, which you've got Kudjo and Bruff. And the young kid in the back row here, who we thought we could put under pressure. So, we're saying, if you look at the shape, if you want to be able to move the ball in around Bruff or target him or target the young back row, we can get after him there. So then obviously, just like we've done with the middles, it's about, and that's what you've got in front of you, what do you think to your back rower? So all right, a good player on that, but we can put him under pressure. Obviously, key player, we'll be talking about him defender, two man or three man. And how is he going to defend? Is he going to want to come for you? Does he sit off? Can we challenge his decision making? So the players, once we've done that, and that's the left edge then, we're going to be facing them. Just what have you seen flip wise? How are they defending out? What the players is true? What do you think? So Jake Truman, what do you think? Well, I need to be doing this. We need to be doing that. What I want you to do is to run that line on him. Stop him doing that. So obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll give all be in his back row up. He was saying, well, I need to put Bruff under pressure. Or at least good job. How am I going to do that? I need to run that sort of line on him. So getting the players to feed back and to talk about what they're saying. So that's the yardage stuff, so you see how we break that down from where we're getting the ball, who we can put under pressure, what the edges look like, and how we're going to uh, attack against those. So this is just good ball then, so just our terminology, building sets, which your class is coming from your 40 out over the halfway line to the opposition half, so you're building in, and we talk about that, we talk about defensive numbers 5 and 5 from the, the middle of the field. So this is just a clip from when Wigan played them. So looking the building in, we got to the middle of the field, full back, we were looking at, just pause that now, 
when we're looking at the road before back, just where if it builds into the line, what's his position like, and the kick options on him, if it's, if it's that flat up. If he defends in there, what are we going to do? But this in terms of building, 5-5, five, five, we're asking the question, what sort of players are we going to be using there? And we're saying, well, we're saying, well, we need to run well, this sort of player, this is what we need to be doing on the edge there. Because they defend like that, we should see some clips on so the quite on them. <clears throat> so what happens next, we've gone 5-5, five, five. what do the numbers look like now? Who are you carrying the ball against? You've got a late retreat. And then, that's the sort of stuff we'll be talking about. How can we get that sort of impact on our players? So this was just, um, just the ability with Nackies to put diagrams in. So we spoke about, just to show them this in terms of our shape. So the player from the middle of the field, also the post is what they're doing when the defender so if they're going five and five so five defenders either side of the play the ball and what our shape looks like in terms of position what we want our our attacking shape to look like so then what we did was we played against Leeds so obviously I'm saying the players right that's the shape you need you pause that in the middle that's the shape that we can get these on so if you look at the shape we've got this is from the diagram there so it's flat both sides He's at position where he's on two hours of full back, should be sat in behind the rook and seeing what happens here. But we still get an effective player through this slide so on So I'll remind the players that that's the shape that we look, look at, the easy play options from that shape then. Just as a diagram. We've got that shape, all that shape. So players, yep, yeah, we'll stick with those two players. We run those, both, those players both sides of the field. This is just another example of the flat shape. Thinking what other fields are going to do, seeing what we've seen on previous clips when they're going those numbers from the middle of the field, five and five. And then, who can we put under pressure? So just another example of a, a diagram and a play option that we could do. And obviously just talking about the left with our play options from that part of the field what we're doing numbers wise and what we'll do when we put the full back in there, what players are we going to use and we'll get some feedback from, from the players and look at some different play options. And then that'd be that'd be pretty much it. So, yeah. Any questions or oh, sorry, we're going there. Okay. Have you up that? Okay, I saw say once they've done the preview, uh, we do a preview with Chef. And they do a preview with, with Pauli uh, and Danny to look at how they're going to attack and how we'll defend. Pretty much a similar, similar start of the style, get the boys to talk about what we're going to do. So once we've got that done, if you talk about a little bit more, the, the youth team analysis, which well, when I joined, the, the kids got nothing really, they just got a game uh, filled and they analysed from the coach. Um, so I wanted to bring in some basic staff reports which we started the last year um, and we've got the development group this year which is our, our lead academy boys to fill in that gap between the first team and the academy which we stand looking after um, again which which is going to be using next sport um, a lot because the boys can you know, they'll be so I know teams will get a basic stats report but then boys will still get the first team measures so then it allows me to filter between Dan can monitor them and they can monitor on their own computers themselves. Um, again, this is Dan on camp with one of the young boys and our knack allows him to, to, to jump between if you want to speak a bit about that. Yeah, it's just, uh, obviously the eight lads, so obviously just trying to upskill them as, as quick as we can, so you know, they can be playing first team, so just with, obviously the ability with knack is that was filmed that morning, you know, that's that morning's training session, so I've gone straight back, uh, Mills has got the game, whacked onto my laptop, I've done probably an hour's work, cut up a lot of clips for the eight players, attack and defence. Really, really simple as you said, tagging, cut out, done. And then I've just grabbed that six week in there, young half back, full back. Um, I've just grabbed him, I think I've shown him probably six clips, three attack, uh, three defence. Um, talked to him, obviously just help him, also, uh, as Chef said, to guide his practice for the next day, really, to see improvements in his practice. Um, I think I went through yeah, eight lads there, um, half an hour, but it's done, it's done like that. Those lads are then ready to move on to the next day um, and not for the better for that. But like I say, it's really good um, in terms of the speed that you've got everything. I was talking to Palmer earlier when, when he first started, it used to take hours and hours and you've got the old VHS press record and stuff and transfer from one to other and 
and all that, whereas now it's just stance on your laptop and you're ready to go. And, you know, to, to, to be able to do that, it's been a massive help these kids come to. Yeah, the, the academy culture, the, the 16th culture on the software as well this year, so it's, it's, a, it's a whole club now we've, we've moved to it. And that's one of the 16s got us night and make going over and he just said it's just can't go how easy it is. With, with these guys, they had uh, used to do PowerPoint and they had Kenobia uh, and Opta. So the boys used to watch a video like their previews like that in a, in a small screen uh, at the top. And then they used to like drop out of that into another software for training clips and they drop out of that into another for PowerPoint. So that just allows them to go in through a one presentation a lot smoother probably short meetings now because of it as well uh, but the idea of that with the youth as well is everybody's up together the youth can set stuff to first team coaches you can all open it up really easy and it's all between the list as well which, is, which makes life a lot easier so end of the week so it'll be a run through day so it won't be a third this week probably will have a, a presentation ready for the boys where they will We'll know Catalan squad, for example, by tomorrow. So we'll put predicted team together. Um, some clips, Powley links his, his training clips. There's maybe some old footage. I know last year did some 2017 last year. Um, some plays that we're looking at. Um, some good defensive clips. So he pulls it all together. Um, and I'll show you. He's going to show you an example of one now. Yeah, so uh, the, the way our, our normal week would, would, would work is um, we'd have our, our review, um, we'd, we'd train, and we'd have a couple of days practice, depends on how the week looks, then we'd have a day off, and then they would come in and, and have a final run through, so that would be on Thursday, so so tomorrow the, the players have, uh, have got a day off, and we'll come in Thursday and play Friday, so um, uh, players' memory spans, uh, pretty sharp, and um, so they, they need they need reminding. But I think um, one of the, the great things that, that this allows us to do is is to, to put everything in there together. So you already mentioned that you've seen the change with PowerPoint with any di diagrams, uh, training uh, clips um, in alongside um, the the games, the previous games of the teams that we're, we're playing against. So invaluable really to be able to tie all that together. And those who was talking about we used to use several different packages to give the players what we thought uh, was necessary to give them a full picture and to watch themselves uh, running the plays because it's one thing uh, having a look at the opposition doing we play completely different to the other opposition so we've got to try and tie it all together and make it all believable make it the players believe that yeah we we know that we can deliver that um, and we, we we show them exactly how and um, so so i I mean, I would, what I would do, I'd, um, but Dan, Dan would have clipped some stuff, says would have clipped some stuff, so I'll just import them into it, uh, and then I'll go through all, all the practice sessions and pick out the relevant clips, and then link them all together. Okay, there's a, the other side of it is uh, from a, a motivational uh, perspective, as, you, as you'll see in a minute. So, uh, name our team, and obviously I spoke to the, the boys uh, before that, and uh, the guys who were, were going to miss out, Players who, uh, uh, who are going to be in there, maybe uh, where they're going to play, how long they're going to play, those those sorts of things, um, and then a, a possible team. We, we're not bad with this, are we? We generally get it. Uh, not not too bad. Uh, so you've got a 19-man squad, um, but at times um, you, you're making you're making calls on on a team. So we'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll go into uh, into the the matchups. So I'll I'll say right. Um, <coughs> what do we think? What do you think about the players at the top of the so we try and, from a motivational point of view, the, the packs obviously uh, pretty big in terms of getting over the opposition. So we always try and try and put a little bit of a, a, a spike in there on on players. Um, and that you know, there's there's times where the opposition players clearly a, a better player um, on, in the papers than, than his, his opposite number, but you, know, you want. You want people to be getting better and to be competing massively um, against some of the, the outstanding players that they're playing against. It's all about playing. We've got some awesome players. Um, and the, at times they talk about, well, we're so much better than these. You know, let's get over the top of them. And this this is obviously playing against these boys in a fair challenge. We're going to good side. Um, but yeah, so we just put the matchups up there. 
Yeah, drop it down there. And then I'll give them a reminder then, so, so Shez will have spoke to them about the place that, that, that we're going to use. So I'll put that up there. Um, just give them a reminder. And then, uh, you've got the notes on it, mate. So uh, but the, one of the things that, that you can do on this is uh, is you can put, put notes on. So this is, uh, Shez writes completely different to me, so I know that that's his. Uh, <laughs> even, even in type, I can tell that this is Shez's. Um, so uh, th this, so we're looking at, at, at this here. So uh, so, so club, uh, the, the hunt term is just working really hard for markets to stop the play being effective. So, and you've got a little bit of one of the, one of the tricks here of your mills in. So you're looking at club A, so there's some, some of the real nice bits that you can do to highlight players that you want to look at. So, so club and how hard he works, so just nudge it on there. So just putting pressure on there, so just take it back. So if you watch here, what, what we want to do, what we would want to do, just pop, pop, pause it there. So you see how he's played early. He's played early from, from there to there, so he can't impact on the line. Okay, so we want to stop him, stop him doing that. So the play ends up being defended pretty well. So not that down, mate. So this is my, my terminology to Mills. You know, Shez, Shez works on, um, on his, uh, his little iPhone, which is a fine answer. He shouldn't have that in there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but my uh, is it'll be knock it down on nudge it on. It took you a while to get that, yeah. didn't it? Super nudge. So super nudge. <laughs> yeah, a little nudge on or, or knock it down, which is going to the to the next clip. So, um, so Chez is talking here about five, five, five. Just open that up, mate. Yeah, there's open it up. So yeah, let's go. Nudge it on. So again, it's just. Just looking at what the, the wide angle just gives you a good good picture. Just pause, pause it there. So you've got you've got Tompkins in here. There's a little bit with your muzzle here. Okay, and you got five five. So um, just play that again. What what happens here? So we're always looking at the little bits and pieces that uh, the way that the team team defends. Okay, not that down mate. So then pause it there. So so the key key thing is to it's to then to be able to relate our practice to what we're seeing on, on video. Okay, so I'll take all the week uh, and put it right at the end and say, right, this is what we've got, this is what we're playing against. Sometimes talk about what the, the opposition coach is, is saying in, in the press. Um, so anything that can grab hold of, really. So if you look at what Paul McShane, McShane's doing here, he's just nosing out. Um, just so, so what he's trying to do is, you see Gadwin Springer here, that would be club. In, in the video that, that you saw before. So we want to stop him running, so Paul and Shane's come out to stop him, and then he passes there. So just play that on me. Pause it there. So then we've got right at the line, which is what we want to do. Okay, they want to stop us getting in the line, we want to get at the line, so we're trying to think of strategies to make that happen. And then is we just just take that back a little bit. So we're always looking then at what happens so I'll pause it there. So this this is the second part of the play, thinking about the stuff that Shez was talking about. So that, that line there, so we're always looking at these lines, is he coming across him? There's some of the little bits and pieces that we want to get right. And, and what is his line? So we would say that he's, he's on the up to early. Okay, so then we can give him feedback for the day after. Hopefully the wind will get right now. We've got our final team run. Okay, so it is. Just getting our time in mind, okay? That's my child like when he capitalized down a bit like this. Okay, then we'll look at some, some Wakefield clips. And we it's just our terminology again. Just the play pause it there. So a real good play because um, we've got an inside support and an outside uh, line runner, so it stop it stops the inside defense coming at you too hard. And then we, we uh, what they do is they want to back off Wigan. They want to back off on the edge. So they don't come and get you too much. So we want to say we can play right in the line and put them under pressure. And Wakefield caused them a lot. I think they won this game. They caused them a lot of trouble. So knock it down, mate. So then we'd go, right, we'll look at this play. How did we run it? We'll pause it there. So that's a good line. And 
straight line from change, and we'll always try and get the um, the, the bibs to, to defend the way the opposition would. Um, so we'll try and show them footage before we go out and train. Dan would take uh, ownership of that. We we'll show them footage so they, cause they're, they're not defending like us, defending like the opposition, so we can get maximum out of out of the training session. Okay. I'm going to look at that and um, just put something else in there. Um, and, um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So there's just some, some what we call a pop, which is a, a little turn up like. And there's, there's a. We pause it there. So we'll always look at the opposition and think um, what we've seen something there. We think we can tweak some of our, our game to make sure that we can be as effective as, as we want. So if you look here, just nudge it back a bit, mate. You know the old terminology again. So if you look at this line, so we're looking at what happens. What happens here when that line when that line goes in there. So then we'll we'll throw something in practice. So you've got the one in practice. Pause it there. So you see that line? bringing this out and creating space there so we, we look at something that we think yeah there's, there's something there for us and then and then we'll put something in that we think yeah we can isolate that that space it doesn't always work but we you know we get a lot of things right we think without without attacking game. and this this just gives them a good picture of there you go again pause it there so people coming out of the line because we're seeing that line around the back so we're always trying to tease tease defenses or make sure that we, so if you watch uh, Pete Matauti and the way he's playing at the moment, he's fantastic going. So we're looking at numbers all the time, looking at numbers that they, they put there and where, where are we going to, where's he going to go? Because obviously your fullback's massive and he's going to make the number. Um, and, and if we're looking for a four from a certain position, we're looking for five and five from another position, we're looking what the fullback's doing, and do, do we want to play into him or can we isolate inside space? So, so tying it together like that gives a, a real good picture of this is what we thought, this is what we think the opposition is going to do, this is us in practice, have we got it right, do we need to adjust anything, and these are the little tricky bits that we might have changed from week to week that we think could really cause the opposition trouble. Um, and now what I, what I might do as well is, um, I might think, well, last year we played against these, similar situation, we caused them trouble with this, so I'll pull something from maybe in 2017 or 2018 and, and, and put that in. We might have been, there's been times where we've done something in practice um, a year, 18 months before, and I'll go, yeah, what about that shit? So let's get that and put that in. So it just makes it so easy to, to, to manoeuvre things about. Can you get that? Just get that and put that on. Just that part of the list, that the list, yeah. And that's what makes this, this easy, so I can, I can bring any list in, into there and then pick little clips out of it so I can I can if you open this one up just just click on one of them any of them will do you know the list of it. so I can pull anything I can just pull anything out, out of here sorry there slides out there so you want another one so I think you can just pull one in there and put it in and then you can remove it in so it's real real easy and you can you can do so so much with it um, and I just think that, that gives, gives the players a real good picture. So, uh, any questions, boys? You know exactly what we've got to do. So, that, not just attack as well, so it'll be all, all defensive stuff. So, so I'll go through all that, I'll shorten it down. <coughs> it seems like it's a lot of clips. So, uh, yeah, it loves his clips. So, I'll, I'll shorten it down a fair bit and show the players uh, yardage, yardage attack, football attack, yardage defence, what they're going to throw at us, and um, try line defence. And then there'll be some similar clips of how we've defended situations. And again, we'll relate it to, to earlier games if, we, if we've been successful as well. How long does your team meeting last? The final one? Yeah. Um, 40 minutes, yeah. probably. Um, sometimes less. Sometimes less, depends. It'll be very short this week because we're ending up in footage on it. We've only got one game, so it's going to be nice and short and sharp. So I'll talk about some, some different things this week. We'll talk about our team, team goals. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a, oh, not too. I don't want that to be too too long. Um, players' concentration levels. Um, I mean, I, I have 40 minutes might be a little bit too too 
a lot of times, but um, you know, they need the information, we feel they need the information. And I, I said to the players yesterday, put my notice, you can spend a bit more time over the first two months of, of the season. I'm not sure they were too keen on that. See, <laughs> um, I'm you get on, it's a job, it's a job, you've got to get on with your job. And, you know, we're a team that wants to win a, a, a championship, and we're just, we're just falling a little bit short, so we've got to find, we've got to find our edge. And then we feel like we've gone to another level, uh, stats and, um, and delivery uh, of, uh, of video and analysis. We feel like we've gone to another level this, this year. Hopefully, all of you know, pay dividends. Yeah, you were talking about um, how you're wanting to enhance your players' ownership, so obviously they're getting stuff up themselves. Do you think, would you like to get to a point where they're running these like presentations? And yeah, well? definitely, yeah. I mean, we've, we've, we've tried to do all, all sorts of things. Uh, we, I don't think we've quite got it right yet, but you know, we've forced people to come up and talk about two clips, two clips each, and they come up and, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> so it's quite hard to get people to, you know, I remember we, we, we've, we've done a lot of things, uh, not, not so much this year, but where uh, we've, in, in the team environment, I would, give, uh, I would give that to a player and say, uh, right, talk about that for a minute. Right. And, uh, I wouldn't say it's to Greg Minikin. Greg Minikin was, was like this, and uh, he was going, yeah, it's a, it's a pen, um, it's, uh, it's got, if you press it, and, and I said, no, no, turn now. He went, I looked at the rug, and oh, fucking hell, lots of pens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, to get people just communicating, um, yeah, we've done all, all sorts of stuff, haven't we, just, and we, and we haven't quite found the magic form, I think they're getting better. Is it getting better? And yeah, there's, we, we definitely need to unlock something. You know, what folks like is you don't really want to talk to a group of them. You get up here and you, you feel un- uncomfortable um, until you get the, the, the experience. Even the experience players, even some experienced players are not great at it. But yeah, I think that's, that's our goal this year is, is to get them communicating and leading on, um, on, on some of these meetings. Yeah, so final. Have to wait up in the final meeting, and that that gives them a draw into the game and the process. You can get over all there with. But what I like about these guys is something everywhere else I've been it stays the same all year, but these change every couple of weeks. It could be that for me. But at the end of the day, I like it because it, it keeps them fresh. And I know from when I was at a different club, trying to preview these guys is an absolute nightmare because they're constantly changing stuff. Throw different stuff here every week. It's the, it's the constant change in which I think gives these guys a bit of an edge. So, yeah, that, that wraps uh, us up really before Josh finishes off. Is there any questions for me on what other the guys you've got? Or... See, blokes don't, don't like talking. <laughs> blokes don't like talking, do they? Just what have you got from it? What have you found interesting from an analysis point of view or from? From our point of view, what have you seen? Is there anything you need to take back in the takeaways? Obviously, like, what we illustrated, we do with scholarship, so we see complied with a completely different ballgame than that. Yeah. On how we can help you. And how we can, like, so we believe in everything now, terminology, all we've got to learn day by day and all that, just to back up what you are doing. Yeah. To see that now, I think that's an art in health. What would you say about the percentage of our life? You'll be different with senior players, but like positives and negatives, you know, like we only have our guys to win negatives, so yeah. this wrong, this wrong. Would you say there's like yeah. a. Well, I think it, depending on what level you're at, you, you want people to feel good about themselves, don't yeah. you? You know, I mean, the, these players, a lot, of, a lot of our players are elite players, aren't they? You know, so you know, they, they're striving to be better, and the margins are, are, are very small yeah. when you get to be at the level some of our players are at. But when you've got young players, you want to give them as much positivity as you can, and even your, your, your critique is—it's—it's it's nice critique, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, that's that's the way it is. But you still. You, Young players still need to be critiqued. They still need to know that everything's not because they've had the mums and dads and the coaching them generally yeah. as they come through, and then they get to a, a situation where they're in a, a professional club and it has to have a different feel about it. It has to feel like it's another level. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, when they come to us, I'm having to wipe the backsides and uh, and, and wipe oh. the nose, and that's that's no no good, is it? And we so we we're battling with with some young players because young people are different now, aren't they? 
They're completely different. You know, they get they get that that much given that it's ridiculous. And we get some young players here, or we we're like not not trying to break them, but we're trying to help them to understand that this is a tough industry. This, and you have to get them ready for for what 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 they face. But the, there's a balance. There's a balance to be had. Yeah, getting it right is important. Anyone else? Yeah,
I think this is a great entry into analysing and, and shooting stuff around it. Um, not that I was coming to just show you all that bits, but it kind of led on from, from where we were there. But I think that's a very quick way of seeing shoot, analyse, share it, and review the back. But I, uh, like Steve said, uh, start somewhere and build up, I think, is, is uh, definitely something to do. Any more questions for these guys? Because they've got much more interesting answers than you. Just to mention games back, what would be like the top like the forms in the game? So you talked a lot about the stuff you do in the arm trip before and so on. But like when you mm. first get a video, what are you looking for? Like determining your success on the sort of like player level? Is it thing, you know, like quick play balls or when you're in the field or completion? Yeah, well, completions. I mean, we're, we're just going through at the moment, so we 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 um, we're trying to get some ownership from the players on on our goal setting. So we we're talking about five, five attack standards, five five defense. So uh, from a defensive point of view, uh, uh, t- tackle tackle wins, uh, trap twenties, which is a uh, um, which keeping the opposition in in the twenty meter area for for three tackles. Um, something we work we work hard on, um, uh, and we're getting some some feedback from from the players, um, of the track, so sort of kick 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 pressure, um, from an attacking point of view, uh, com- completions, um, rub wins, rub wins, so carry wins, and um, so we we'll come up with, with five. So you have got five key indicators, um, and and they'll be the basis of it. But obviously then there's a lot more, as you've seen, there's a lot more into it. So you know, then we, we're looking at all the detail of, of how successful have we been both with and without the ball, and what's helped us to be be successful. But there's there's also a lot of effort things, you know, a lot of effort things in there where you know the the minimum standard effort things. So I talked about retreats um, and and things like that. So so hunt and track. Um, there's a lot of system things in there that we want to get right. So there's a lot, there's a lot in. <coughs> um, to be very hard to say, that that would be the best way of saying it is your five key performance yeah. indicators with the ball and five key performance indicators without it. And it's just going back to the thing about efforts and stuff, because obviously I've, I've worked in, in stats and stuff like that. Uh, you often you can't see those efforts and stats because they don't have a figure necessarily. Like it's not like a tackle number. It's, it's I don't know, maybe speed or aggression is it and you and stuff, but do you then look like bid that separately because it's more mental and you can achieve this? Um, yeah, well, but you can't, so so if you look at a retreat, uh, a retreat to, to us, uh, an outstanding retreat, is to get back and, and out. So if you've been a third uh, third man in a tackle, if that is an effort thing. To get back there and get out is tough, isn't it? Because, you know, you, you've got to go up off the floor, you've got to sprint back, and turn effectively enough to get back out. So that is one that you can really see. So if you look at Paul McShane and, and I'd say Nathan Massey, the two best examples in our team, uh, a track as we call it, is putting the kicker under pressure. So I've seen Paul McShane come uh, come after one kicker, the ball's been passed on to the second kicker and he speeds up again. You know, and they're distinctive efforts that, that you can see. Um, line break um, recovery, so if you uh, can see the line break um, and you, you see people and you're thinking, Man, you, you should be back there. I, 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 when I, went, I went to Australia years ago um, and there was a conditioner who, who timed uh, recovery uh, after a, a line break. He timed the recovery and says, I know you can be back there two seconds quicker than that because I know how fast you can run over 50 metres. So there's, there's, you, know, you can see a lot of effort things you can, you can see. I understand your point, but it's like the, the middle field for a um, defensive effort, so the, the middle men, uh, so the ball shifted, they, they're expected to keep moving and keep the spaces consistent. So if somebody knocks off, and I always say to players, just when you think it's not going to come back and get you, you know what, it comes back and get you. You know, we say that a bit, it's just don't, do not presume. You just keep working so we can judge a lot of those uh, effort things. So, in terms of an attacking perspective, it's fight and effort on the floor. So you see people will carry, they might get, they might get dominated a little bit, but don't stop fighting. 
that's an effort thing that you can clearly see and you can clearly judge. Like kick returns, things like that. Players getting back behind the ball and working out. Yeah. But the back row is going to sidelines to give you shape, that sort of stuff. It's effort on push. You turn it up for somebody, somebody's carrying the ball, working hard for them and then working hard to get back <coughs> position again for the next play out and that sort of stuff. You know, all the things that you can pick up within your, your, you know, your analysis and that sort of stuff. The last get well. In fact, the tracking back on a line break and chasing them down to corner, that's an effort. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, it's that sort of stuff. It's all the rest of <coughs> things that if all of a sudden scoring a corner and this is a goal kick, that sort of stuff. So you make about reference to in videos, kind yeah. of. Yeah. yeah, you make in that stuff. Yeah, that that stuff that yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like push, so we're talking about push, so it, uh, what happens a lot with push is you, you pull out of it. So I carry the ball and I go part of the way and then I drop out of it. So that would that would be a negative to us. So we we want players up to the line because it has an impact. Because that defender has to account for you. Whereas if, if you stay back here, he doesn't have to account for you. So they're effort things because I know if I if I push all that way, I've now got to come back and then go again. And they're effort things. They put you under pressure then. So they're all you can see them. You can judge them. It's you just defining. What does effort look like to you as, as a coach? That's the important thing. You're always making reference to it, aren't you? That sort of stuff. Yeah. Within your videos. The blokes that work hard, blokes that work hard and are doing their effort, the blokes seeing you talking about it and making reference to it. The same part that it has a custom board in play. You also see lack of effort there, that's the same thing, isn't it? It's all that, all that. Um, for me, I think. I think that's uh, Ryan, Daryl, Danny, and Steve. That's uh, incredible insight. I think we've seen everything from from the week. Not everything. They've got to keep something to themselves. Um, but how they review a game, how they look through it, you know, how they build these presentations, how the feedback, and I really appreciate listening to that. I thought it was really good. Um, so thanks for sharing all that insight. And I thought that was very good. So thanks for <laughs> Um, just say if there are any more questions, I'm going to be hanging around for a while. Um, any of the software side of stuff, you've got um, some flyers there and my uh, contact details on the card. Um, everything can be trial as well. So like that Mac Store Tag and View app on the iPad, you can download that for free on the App Store and try it. Uh, the software you can try out as well. From, from us, we just want to learn about <clears throat> what you want to do, what you want to achieve, and we'll show you a way that you can do it. Okay, so there will be a way to do it, and we'll show you some different uh, examples of doing it. And you should be able to replicate what these guys at the top level are doing. That's what we always try to do at uh, Analysis Pro, is show how you can replicate what the top level are doing. Okay, so the processes they've done in there, if we break it down to shoot, analyze, share, you'll be able to do that. Cheers, Siri. Um, so, yeah, thanks uh, to all of you for coming and registering, and hopefully it's beneficial for you as well. Thank you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.